Hi and thanks for clicking. In this Vars vlog, I'm bucking the trend somewhat and going back into the archaic period and black figure Vars style. If you've been watching the previous Vars vlogs, you'll have noticed I was inching into the 5th century BC. Whereas in previous Vars vlogs I've looked at one image, here I have a Vars famous for what might be described as a visual library of Greek myth. I will focus on one of the Vars's many images, but fear not, others will feature including one which made something of an impression on me. You may recognise the vase from this photo, it's the Francoise vase, named after the person who discovered it. It was painted by Clytias and made by the potter Agotimos. Clytias was Athenian, and for those who've watched previous vlogs, you won't be surprised in the slightest when I say that this vase was discovered in an Etruscan tomb in what we now call Chiusi. In case your Etruscan geography isn't up to scratch, here's a map. Chiusi is a much later name. The Etruscan name you're looking for on the map is Clevzin. It's next to one of the lakes. We have an approximate date for the vase as around 570 BC, though we don't know exactly when the vase ended up in Clevzin. Just to give some context, if we take 570 BC as the date it was made and painted, that's 80 years before the Greeks fought the Persians at Marathon. And if you were to appear in Rome, then you'd probably find Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, or Tarquin the Elder, as the king in Rome at the time. He was the fifth king, and to wrap things up in a nice bow, he was also Etruscan. The vase is what's known as a volute crater. A crater was the mixing bowl used in gatherings such as symposia, where it would hold the wine, or the mixed wine. The volute part refers to the style of the handles. It stands at around 66 centimetres, 26 inches high, so it's quite a large piece, and this makes sense given that it had to hold the wine for the party. As we well know, they quite fancied their wine back in the day. Logic dictates that this would have been sold to rich families who could afford to entertain in this manner. Perhaps it had many owners, or, or just one, as it may have stood in the centre of the room during the symposia, or social gathering. It needed the right aesthetic, and there's certainly no denying that we have it here. There's around 270 human or animal figures on it, and some 121 inscriptions of people, gods and even animals. If you were looking for a conversation starter, it would be nigh impossible to have this and not be able to spark up a discussion from it. As I mentioned, there's a lot of myth depicted. We have the marriage of Peleus and Thetis, for example, with gods in attendance. Here you can see Zeus arriving in style with his thunderbolt. Perhaps he left it with the coats. One deity not invited was Eris, and when you find out that she was the goddess of strife, you can kind of see why. Enraged, she still turned up and rolled a golden apple at the feet of Hera, Aphrodite and Athena with to the fairest inscribed on it. And as some of you might know, this sparked the judgment of Paris and thus the Trojan War. Weddings, eh? Another violent outcome to a wedding was far more immediate. When some centaurs were invited to a wedding, they became very rowdy after drinking wine, something they weren't used to. The resulting fight was the infamous Lapiths versus the centaurs a common theme in art, and even featured on the Parthenon. As well as a good story, perhaps there's also some irony of such an instance involving drunken behaviour being present on this piece. Was it a subtle reminder to guests to pace themselves a bit? In a more upbeat vein, we have the return of Hephaestus to Olympus after being thrown out. Here he is, riding a donkey back to Olympus with a satyr Silenus behind him. It's not so clear on this image, but the god's feet point in different directions. A reminder that he was crippled. I'm sure Hephaestus was ecstatic at returning, and Silenus looks, well, uh, shall we say upbeat about it all too. But this vase wasn't just gods on horseback, or wedding fiascos. The funeral games of Patroclus featured. Having this myth represented on the crater just underpins the range of themes and subjects on it. The scene which I want to look at in more detail is present near the top. Here it is, in full. It looks like a boar hunt, but this is certainly no normal boar. To borrow a quote, we're going to need a bigger spear. This is the Caledonian boar. The myth behind it all involves a god with a grudge, which isn't exactly unusual. In this case, it's Artemis who, irked that the king of Caledon failed to make sacrifice to her, sent an enormous boar to terrify the area around Caledon. In case you didn't know, here's where Caledon existed. It was east of the modern town of Messalonghi, which is marked on the map. As this myth ties to a specific location, it gives the vase another dimension. Here it is acting as a sort of mythic map of ancient Greece. This isn't a wandering hero or set of heroes, it's a place where heroes met to undertake a famous task. The list of heroes varies depending on who you read. 
The most famous are Meliga, Peleus, that's Achilles' dad, Telamon, father of Ajax, and Nestor, who apparently hid up a tree. Don't seem to remember him telling that story much in the Iliad, though. Arguably, the most famous hero was Atalanta, who was, shock horror, a woman. We can see her in the first image. This is the front half, as it were. Atalanta has the conventional white skin to indicate that she's a woman. And you might notice that the heroes and the hunting dogs are all named. Atalanta is shown with a javelin, and according to the myth, she was the first to draw blood. Her stance is the same as Melanion. He's also referred to as Hippomenes, and he was the chap who won a race against Atalanta in order to marry her. This scene obviously predates this, but I sense pairing them together was some kind of a nod. The scene at the boar's front is wonderfully detailed. The boar's fierceness is part communicated by its size and muscular nature, but look at the eye. It seems startled and crazed. You don't need to have hunted boar to know that an animal in this state is at its most dangerous, even if it was normal sized. Two dogs help foster the sense of danger. One lies dead on its back and its pitiful appearance is in contrast to the boar which is upright and steadfast as the party closes in. The dog further back also allows comment on the boar. Its ears are lowered, it looks wary and fearful as to what's going on. The curve of the underside of the dog's neck seems to mirror the upwards curve along the top of the boar's head. The technique is beautiful, no angle is being wasted. This is no simple painting of a hunt. There is effect and suggestion everywhere. The two front figures, one of which looks like Meliga, who finally speared the boar, are also wonderfully detailed. I don't see this as a posing victory. I cannot make out whether the boar has been speared or is about to. Perhaps the artist is holding us just as the boar is about to meet its end. In the business end, things seem less harrowing, but I suppose it would be more preferable to be stationed there. One dog tries to jump and get purchase on the hind of the boar. A lone hero lies under the boar. According to myth, several heroes died in the hunt, though not all by the boar. As in the confusion, spears went astray and hunters were killed by hunters. Moving back to the image as a whole, there is a busyness about it, and this is deliberate. According to the myth, the hunt was far from organised, and the artist handles this to perfection. Imagine those looking at the image after a few cups of wine would comment on their own experiences of the hunt and recognise their experiences represented in the placement of a foot or the grip of a spear. It's mythic art, but set within the context of personal experience. Culturally, we might ask whether the presence of a vase in an Etruscan location meant that these myths were widely known and experienced as outside of the Greek city-states. The hunt for the Caledonian boar appears elsewhere in Etruscan art, notably in a funeral urn. In the context of cultures exchanging myths, the discussion is how much rather than if it happened. Where then might this vase sit? If we hold it within the context of cultural exchange, we move from the idea that it was simply a nice trinket, something bought from overseas. This was a luxury item, albeit one which was dripping with references, an Etruscan audience would engage with at varying degrees. On a personal level, this vase is an image which I ended up getting as a tattoo. It shows Ajax carrying the body of Achilles. I'll never know why, but there's something about it which just got under my skin, so I had it put on my skin. There's plenty more I could have said about this vase, so many more images and ideas, so my challenge to you is to find images of it and just look at them. I can guarantee if you look long enough, you'll recognise something which relates to you. In any case, before we wander down the path of overshare, thanks for watching. If you like it, please leave a thumbs up. It's always nice to get feedback. Till the next Vars vlog, take care and keep safe.